What is up guys, welcome back. So, what we're doing today, we are gonna be working on, I don't know about today in general, but in this video, we're gonna be working on the 60 Dodge. I got some cab mounts in the works for that. But if you guys remember right, a few weeks ago, probably a month now, I took out my garage door with our new frame rack. So, I have no garage door. There's nothing here. The garage door is actually in the back. I'm gonna flip this thing around and kind of show you guys the game plan. Instead of buying a garage door, I got Jimmy here with me and we're gonna be building a garage door because garage doors are like $3,000 to find out. And uh, right now I have an eight foot door and I really need a 10 foot door, but they're not even sure a 10 foot door will work for me because of my rafter up here. So that's 10 foot from here to the ground. So they're, they're talking like I need probably a nine foot door. So I was telling Jimmy my uh, situation, he's like, oh, We'll just build you a door. So I've been hard on my building. The door is definitely not big enough for these big trucks I'm pulling in and out of here. And as they're coming in, I've either hit it with a tractor or whatever. My header is rotted out of the garage. It's, uh, it's in bad shape. So Jimmy's got some thin wall two by two square tubing. And we're gonna build like an airplane hanger style door. So this door now, I can't go left or right. I can't slide it right because of our storm cellar. I can't, I can't go this way. I mean, I could probably part of it, but it would come to here. So that won't work. We can't go that way because of our breezeway. So we're going up. We're going to just airplane hanger. It's going to hinge from here. Actually, we're going to cut, we're going to cut this opening out way up here to that nail line. And then the whole door is just going to straight up. Right, Jim? Yep. <laughs> that way it also becomes a roof out here. Whenever it's open, it becomes a roof you can work under to keep oh, you yeah. out of the sun and or rain. Uh, screw a plate into it or bolt it straight into that beam with the hinges on it to lift it up. Yeah. Then right above that, we'll take the saw uh, grinder and we'll cut a line at an angle through that. Yeah. The angle grinder, straight line then that way we can slide metal back in it and up so that it sheds Rain. water yep. and keeps the hinges dry. I like it. Here. This stuff's gonna work perfect. I know it's the, uh, I mean, it's galvanized, should last for a long time, and we're gonna run the metal long ways instead of this way so the rain don't pour down on us and uh, it'll kind of shed the water. To make it nice, I'm just moving outside now. But well, we went ahead and welded hinges to the top of the door. And then these things are gonna flap. Now oh, they're hot right now, so I'm not gonna mess with it. But these are gonna flap. These are gonna bolt to the garage itself. There's a plane on that. Color sample. That's color sample. All right, so it's about three o'clock and uh, DC metal is about 45 minutes from here. That's where we're gonna be getting our metal, so what other would we take than the bus because you don't have to strap nothing down or nothing so headed to dc metal all right we made it <laughs> picking up some metal i didn't realize this was that big of an operation i just thought we were going to pull up get some sheet metal no they're going to make it right here they got the metal in a roll they slide it through bend it and cut it all on location so there's our metal. That's the color we picked out. 
There it goes. That was crazy. Just like that, four sheets in seconds. Yeah. Huh. We made it back from DC Metal and we got the door laying here. I just sprayed some paint. Jimmy just got done drilling the top hinge brackets. Now we're gonna set the door up here, of course, and then we're gonna bolt those four hinges, like one here, one here, here, and there, whatever. That's hard to do, but anyways, we're putting four hinges up there is what we're doing. Went to Harbor Freight, got to visit my favorite person, Tanya, and got us a 2,000 pound Badland uh, utility trailer winch. You might be asking, well, that is a 12 volt winch. Why don't you get like a 110 winch? Well, the 110 winch to hook up into like the shop was like $160. The 12 volt for, you know, a vehicle or a four wheeler was only 60 bucks. So I figured we'll just use a car battery and put a battery tender on it, save a little money and it'll do the same thing. There it is. We got it all put together tonight. We got to put the winch up here. We're going to mess with it tomorrow. We're out of daylight, but we're going to try it. We're excited. Here we go. <laughs> well, that's pretty sweet. So now I got, I, I added 10 foot, or we added 10 foot to the shop. We got 10 by 18, 180 square feet to the <laughs> shade at least. Yeah, that is perfect. Holy cow. That is cool. So tomorrow it's winch day. Yeah. Here's my cardboard templates. Shane's got her all laid out, all fancy. Here I burn her out. Oh, perfect. Good job. Oh, Shane coming in. <laughs>
All right, guys, made it home late last night. And if you guys are wondering why I took the bus up there to get just a few brackets, it's because not only was I getting the brackets for the 60 Dodge, but I was also getting some DOM roll cage material tubing for our 41 Dodge. So there's the tubing. The bus works out pretty good getting metal. I've used it before getting metal because you don't have to mess with a car trailer and stuff. And it's got a big enough floor in it. You can just put it in there. You don't have to strap it down. It works. Let's go ahead and grab our brackets that Shane whipped up last night. I really was not expecting him just to stop what he was doing. I was just going to get some DOM tubing, leave them with my patterns, and then come back in a day or so and pick, it up, pick them up. And um, he whipped them out right then and there. So that was awesome. So let's go put them on the table. Let's weld them up and let's get them installed on the Dodge. And the Dodge will finally be in its own little have its own cab mount so that's really cool i uh, feel like we're making some progress slow progress but some progress is better than no progress start in the bus let's see if we can rescue him hold on bud hold on oh no come here hey let me help you that's fine come on you're fine <laughs> the life of tori here we go. Here, I'm not going to drop you. I'll put you here so you can take off on your own. There you go. Oh, you're going to hang out with me now. You're fine. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Are you hurt? No, you look good. <laughs> I'm going to put you up here so you can get some rest. Take your time. Hey, just let go of me. Hey, I gotta get to work, sir. There you go. Take your time. There you go. Minnie was a bird. I put him up there so Minnie wasn't bothering him. I say this guy's got a headache. He he was in the bus and hit his head pretty good. It's alright, bud. I'm gonna keep him as a pet if he stays down here. Hannah's gonna be real proud of me. <laughs> alright, we'll check on him later. We'll leave him up there so he can take some time. I had the bus door open. He flew in there, I guess. And then when I came in here, he was sitting here. I spooked him, and he went up there and hit the front windshield. So he's probably just kind of out of it. Was that All right, now that I'm not on bird duty, let's weld them things up. The garage door is looking good. Jimmy should be here eh, probably another hour or so, and we'll start getting this thing to work up and down and all of that. And... I get to use my frame rack. So the Viking is up on the rack. The starter's out of it. I need a, we took it to a show in Medora and a starter went out of it. But a lot of you guys have been giving me a hard time that I always work on the concrete floor. Well, that's because I never could afford a rack or I was kind of looking for a frame rack and I found this frame rack on Marketplace for 750 bucks. It works awesome because I can use it as a lift. I can straighten a frame. I can I can build a frame. It's got the towers. It is a 20 foot um, 360 rack, so it just goes right along. You know those uh, towers go right along this rail. But I bought it mainly for a frame rack, so or not a frame rack, a welding table. So we'll be able to you know weld stuff up, get up off the floor, maybe save my knees and back.
I had to run to Lowe's. I got those cab mounts welded up, but we're back on the door. Had to go get a pulley, go get some lag screws. So, unfortunately, tomorrow is going to be my day to get this cab mounted up on this truck. Oh, wow. I was gone for 20, 30 minutes, and Jimmy's already got this thing coming out my garage and everything. ran through going down to the middle of the door here is moment of truth <laughs> I guess we made a uh, airplane door or airplane yeah. hanger door. <laughs> well, that's pretty slick. Door is done other than one little like rain guard thing that's going to go on top to shed the water so it don't go down the door. We got to do that, but we'll do it at a later day. We're back on the 1960 Dodge. You guys seen me weld up the cab mounts. Uh, shout out to Shane for getting them done in a hurry. And I want to show you guys kind of the plan of attack and how we're going to be doing this and why I did what we did. The cab mounts are welded up. These are factory cab mounts from the Dodge. This is going to be your upper, of course. This is going to be your lower. So this is going to go like that. And then you're going to have a bolt ran between there. So we're going to put this on here. Let's see if I can do this one handed. So that's gonna go like that. Then this one is gonna go down here into that pocket. So that's, we're just basically making factory cab mounts. The factory one, it's set up just like it. So there it is, just new and improved, modified version. And this is gonna sit right here. I went ahead and cleaned the frame off. It's gonna sit up here like that and we'll just weld it to the to the frame here in just a second now i do have i do have the cab right where it needs to be what i'm thinking is i think i'm going to bolt the cab mounts to the cab and then we can adjust the cab and do whatever we need and then once everything's perfect you know, we'll, we'll run tape measure on it 3,000 times because I'm OCD. Well, um, that's why I don't want to weld the cab mounts to the frame, then the body, and then bolt it to the body. I think we'd be ahead to bolt the cab mounts to the body, adjust everything, and then weld it. These are going to be the front. So you guys might be looking at these and saying, why is there only one gusset on it? Well, it's because the control arms are right underneath the cab mount so and i went ahead and ground these down some of you guys are going to give me a hard time saying i don't know how to weld that's why i ground it down i was trying to make it just look rolled so it looked like a factory cab mount there's my weld so i'm not going to say i'm the best welder but they're not horrible but if you see that i did grind the sides of them down it's just because i wanted that kind of factory uh bit look so we got our upper and lower control arm and this is where our cab mount needs to be so 
Now that's the reason I did what I did, because if I put that other bracket in here, it's going to be in the way of the control arms. This will be plenty sad enough. What I can go ahead and do in cardboard, I didn't do it just because it was too hard to hold everything. But now that we'll have something more structure and welded to the frame, we can go back and make a nice bracket to go on the other side of this and stiffen it up. But now it kind of makes sense on why there's only one drop leg, one bracket on this one. Got the 41 in with the other one that i don't really want outside is the mouse trap it's in the back junkyard so we gotta go grab the mouse trap real quick the 41 i didn't want outside because of the windows and i still got the wiring i gotta finish up i don't want all that wet <laughs> the mouse trap i don't want wet just because i really like the mouse trap it's been outside before but it's not ideal for an open engine to sit outside, so. Ah! Oh, mouse trap! Here we go. You guys have been asking about the mouse trap. The mouse trap is live and well. I need to take it out more, yes, I know. Now I gotta fix the back. <laughs> but the mousetrap is still kicking. I, uh, we need to take it to some more shows. We just got back from Medora with it. It's a good car, honestly. I just, I don't know. I drive it around here locally some, but it's just hard to take everything to show. So that's that. I literally ran and did all that to get these two in the garage. As soon as I did, it stopped raining. Nobody messes with the dew. I mean, it was coming down there for a little bit. It had a nice little downpour. And then time I made it to the back lot, it stopped. But anyways, I needed it up here, I guess, in the long run. But the Dodge has its cab mounts, so that's a plus. Now we need to... if. What you guys were seeing me do is just kind of measure everything, making sure the cab is on uh, the ca the chassis straight and square. And the other thing is we need to make sure the cap cap. The other thing is we need to make sure the cab is setting level with the frame. We don't want the the cab to be look like it's uh, downhill in the frame or uphill in the frame. We want to make sure the rockers are level with the bottom of the frame. So we got to check that real quick. And if everything's a go. We can bring the welder out here, start burning the cab mounts into place. I got something in my eye. So I guess that's the next step. Let's make sure it's level, drag the welder out here, and we'll start welding it up. That looks 
pretty good to me. We'll come on up with the camera so you guys can see. So we got our bottom of our rocker lip and then bottom of the frame. And that looks really, really good. Went ahead and tacked the rear mounts so we can get those done and kind of out of the way so we can focus on the front. Otherwise, there's just so much going on. But I measured, it's 26 and a quarter from here to here on both of them. They're both square. So that is done. Now I'm gonna tackle the front. and they came up with this garage door it's actually pretty neat uh, they put this pole here just as a safety precaution in case anything were to happen we are going to redo it because right now we wouldn't be able to get in so we are going to put poles on each side that will just slide in through the square tubing but um, enough of that today it is beautiful and windy it is time. It's tranny time. We're going to pull that transmission out of there. Um, when it was in the golden nugget, it was slipping really bad and it just wasn't wanting to shift. You had to put it in first, second, and third. I'm trying um, to remember. Did it shift that bad? Oh my, I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. It was really bad. We're going to have it taken it off to a friend who rebuilds that kind of stuff. So TJ, our friend, is going to, um, well, he doesn't know we're friends, but um, we're friends. He is going to rebuild. We're friends. We are? Yes. Okay. Well, we're friends. And um, so he's going to go through the transmission and make sure it shifts. And I think we're going to put a manual valve body in this one. So, I think um, so. Let's get to it and take this transmission out. By the way, I got a haircut this morning. So. Oh, and my hair is still big and voluminous. Voluminous. I don't know. Our last video said someone um it canceled out their god bless because they made fun of me and then said god bless which is whatever i mean i'm used to being made fun of on youtube you guys are just full of opinions some um, of <laughs> some of you guys are great some of you guys i'm like Golly. yeah but what? Corey got a haircut and my hair is still way up there so uh um, yeah so where we last left off with me you and without hannah hannah had to work uh she picked up some shifts um staffing is horrible and she had to pick up some uh, shifts so we got the cab mounts on you guys seen that well it's time to raise it back up it's going to be easier now to take the transmission out than us crawling underneath of it we got to pull the cab back off anyways because we want to clean the frame paint it and all that fun stuff so you ready for this yes all right let's do it did you even check my cab mounts out or do you want to see them once i raise them up <laughs> yeah you think okay. so is that the one that you went to shane's yep shane yep just cut out right there yeah shane's okay. a gangster yeah go check I out know. the back ones you think the front ones are nice <laughs> crawl up under there oh wow so you still have to weld that one clearly. yeah we got to weld them up a little bit better once the cab gets up oh and next week i think the plan is to shorten take this wheel and bring it up here some of you guys have asked what bed we're using we're gonna use the factory bed but we gotta pull like 30 inches up 30 inches out of the frame i think i don't know better than 18 feet yeah the old welder rig got 18 feet out of its frame there's a grumman it's chilling and i still got to clean up in the garage but the military truck is making progress i'll show you guys just a little bit of this if you guys are going to be in daytona the military truck will be there so i got it kind of tore apart Got the cage pretty much done. Been wiring up everything for the headlights. So I got the looms. My headlights should be here. Um, we're getting closer, but it's kind of a mess right now because I'm trying to finish the wiring. I got the turn signals all wired up. This is going to be the cooling fan. I got to put the relays and everything in it, but there is the cage. And for some of you guys are like, well, how'd you weld the top of the cage up? 
Well, I either had two options. I was gonna cut the roof off the truck, but instead what I did was I took a three inch hole saw, three and a half inch hole saw, and I cut four corners in the roof of it, four circles in the roof, pulled the sheet metal off, welded the top of it, and then set the sheet metal back down. So this roll cage is 100% welded all the way around. I sprayed a little primer on it, ran down, had to get that off, but it is 100% welded. I couldn't get my welder up in here, so I just cut holes in the top <laughs> and I just rest back and be fine. All right, I'm rambling on. Let's go, let's pull this uh, tranny out, babe. Okay. You just find buckwheat? Look at buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hair out of your butt crack? Yeah. Good. All right, here's our cab mounts off. Well, now the cab's off, you guys can see them a little better. I mean, look how sexy that thing looks. Rounded edge, woo. Yeah. You ever seen anything so sexy? Look at Evan. Oh yeah, right. All right, so we need to pull all these bolts out. We gotta figure out how to get this thing out without killing us, because the forklift's over there. We have a cherry picker. Yeah, or we could just, uh, pull this chassis back, set the cab down so it's not in the wind. It is pretty windy today. And we can use a forklift to grab it. We gotta pull the dry shafts out of it. So we got some stuff to do. Sounds like a mess. Yeah. We'll just take them the whole chassis. Here we go. No, don't touch me with yours. It's just gonna have to be there. <laughs> Let's see your hair. <laughs> Look at your bird nest going on. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna know whose hands are whose. <laughs> <laughs> These are mine right now. Me and my broken thumb. Pulling the starter to take the flywheel bolts out of the converter. I'm not sure if this one has to do that or not, but I don't really want to pull the transmission out and find out it does. So pulling the starter and there should be like four or five bolts holding the flywheel to the torque converter. So can't remember, it's been a little bit. You're wondering how I managed to, I don't know if my thumb's broken or just fractured really bad. I was uh, trying to sledgehammer something out and I missed what I was hitting and smoked my thumb. So that's that. Remember when you did that to me and you hit my knee? <laughs> yeah. I'm just dreaming about some lasagna. Maybe go to, what's that place? Olive Garden. Olive Garden. A nice salad with black olives. I am not going to eat healthy if we go there. You can get a salad. A salad? <laughs> yeah. 
You know what I'm dreaming about? Hmm. All the farm trucks that need me in this world. They're dreaming about you too. I know. We did find a sexy farm truck last night, didn't we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. a little bit since I pulled a tranny on one of these and I was thinking it was through the starter a lot of the trucks you got to pull the starter and take the torque converter bolts out from the flywheel and we went ahead and pulled it because when I pulled the starter off you couldn't see them so I was like ah you know we can still get the transmission out like this and then um, once I got it apart I'm like now it's coming back to me there's an inspection plate to remove these bolts on the passenger side of the engine the turbo side right here so as you can see there's a plate uh, it has two 10 millimeter uh, bolts that just cover this plate so it's like just a little access hole to get these bolts out I feel like a dork now because i should have knew that and i just forgot like i said it's been i mean last transmission i guess that beer truck i would have took the transmission out of that but that's been three years ago mm -hmm. i've slept since then so I think we got all the bolts out of the torque converter. We're gonna pull it. We're gonna have Thomas inspect it, make sure it's good. Make sure the flywheel don't have no cracks and stuff like that. Just the, you know, you don't wanna put the transmission back in and be like, well crap, you know, the flywheel's damaged. We've rotated all the way around. Flywheel seems good, but you could still have a like a hairline or something in the, in the webbing part of it. So I guess let's uh, pull this converter. Corey, that's really heavy. Ain't nothing for me. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Might be another one in there. Meanwhile, it looks like we have a dead dog behind Corey. <laughs> <laughs> She's live and well. Yes, she is. It does look dead, don't you? I'm over here taking these torque converter bolts out. Hannah's sitting over there just grinning ear to ear on her phone. And I'm like, what? She goes... Oh my gosh, she's just going on and on. Just, you, you can't, I just can't wait for you to see. I'm like, bring that thing over here. Let me see what you're seeing. Someone just sent her a tow truck. That's an, an N600. N600 tow truck. Yeah, so an N600 is what the welder rig is. Man, it is, it is can't even talk now. I got me all flustered. Man, <laughs> is it sexy. There we go. We just don't want to drop it to the forward. Otherwise, it's going to pour a foot on me uh-huh so yeah the flywheel looks good it's not cracked sometimes you'll get like hairline cracks in here but this one seems pretty good so yeah that is that we're going to take this converter take it the tj's along with the transmission power wash it do him a little favor just so he's not working on it so nasty he's probably used to it but so tj built the transmission tj and logan they're next town up from us. They built the transmission in the military truck back when I had the Jeep body on it. And 
I, um, that's how I met them. They were, they reached out and was like, Hey, we want to build that transmission, man. That transmission takes a beating and them boys built it good. So they're always reasonable. They treat me right. They don't put anything that it don't need in it. This transmission slipping. So they'll go through and just kind of go through it and just put all the new parts, tell me what it needs. And if it don't need it, they won't do it. And they'll ask me like, Hey, what do you plan on doing this truck? I just told them, Hey, it's just going to stock 12 valve. I just want it freshened up. We're not, we're not going to be beating on it or nothing like that. I say that, but, <laughs> um, we are going to put a manual valve body in it. Hannah said that earlier. So manual valve body, I know I said this before, I'll say it again. So this is a 47 RE transmission. So it, um, it shifts hydraulically up to third gear, but it's going to need 12 volts to shift it into overdrive and torque converter lockup. So with the manual valve body, what you're doing is getting rid of, you're still doing the electronics but it's on on the shifter so you can shift it like it's a manual but with no clutch you just bang shift it so all right that's that we're going to put this to the side and that's about it for this video all right so like i said that is the end of the video i feel like we got quite a bit done a garage door some cab bolts or cab brackets and the transmission pulled what you're seeing in my hand is going to be the front cab mount so in an earlier video you guys were kind of seeing me struggle trying to put the core support in well, this is what's left and it's going to be welded to the truck's core support and then bolted to the frame. So there is that. Yeah. You know, you want to say, I mean, you've seen me do all the work in this video. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I am. Corey's been trying to, trying to learn me on, you know, taking stuff out and I always want to learn. We just never have enough time. Um, so he is trying to slow down and be able to teach me what goes where and what bolts to take out to take the tranny out and um so i am still learning and he's teaching me as good as he knows yeah i'm trying to my patience i'm she says i don't have a lot of patience so today i feel like my patience yeah, was there you've done great i was nice and like not too bossy i feel like um before we were doing youtube it was kind of nice because i was able to hey you know kind of explain to her and teach her, um, or even I don't know why I'm teaching anyone, but uh, you know, just trying to have that relationship and be able to have her be able to take something apart without getting aggravated. Now that we're doing YouTube, everything's a little bit more faster pace. And now we're so, both aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it was kind of cool just to be able like, hey, you got to take this, you know, take these bolts out and just kind of let her do her thing on her time and um, whatever. And I'm injured with my thumb right now because I smoked it with the sledgehammer so my left hand is now uh bruised up pretty good from the hammer so it was nice to have a helping hand that is that um oh i will say um i got to meet mike and allison that came into the restaurant and um you know who you are and you know what you did and i super super appreciate that um hopefully we'll see you guys at a show this weekend speaking of shows we are going to russell springs i couldn't think of the name russell springs kentucky there's a show on saturday and we'll put the flyer right here yeah so i think that's going to wrap it up next week we're going to be and i guess next week's video i'd like to start getting the bed on this thing and start shortening the frame up so we have that to do this is going to be our winter content truck we're going to try to wipe it out as quick as we can but also take you guys along with us as much as we can so that is that i guess that's it i hope you guys all enjoyed the video and we'll catch you guys next wednesday at six so don't forget to like comment and subscribe doing the vehicle It used to be in the truck bed. Back wait, what did you do? <laughs> Look, Minnie's like, uh-uh, get this away from me. This is why we don't take the dogs to a car <laughs> show. We felt bad for them, so we're like, you know, we'll take them to a local show. Buckwheat lays one out right in the middle of the highway, <laughs> in the middle of the street. <laughs> Look, she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, we're down here in Medora. What an adventure already. So 
We got the Lodestar here. I brought it here earlier this week. Brian and Heather drove our 62 Cadillac limo. Check it out, guys. We actually have the Viking out for once. So there you go. You guys have been asking about the Viking. The Viking still lives. Hannah drove it. We got the Grumman. The Grumman made it. We're not unloading the trailer. I don't feel like unloading it. We got the 41 Dodge. We brought it. We brought the 51 Crosley. And also we have the 65 Ford. The welder rig is here. We got the 65 Ford farm truck. It made it here. And also the square body hand and I painted down the road. We actually sold it. So it's just uh, right down there. We'll run into it here in a little bit, but there's that. All right, we got the man of the hour, Mr. Michael over here. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> oh yeah, so. Appreciate you guys all showing up today. You know what, as soon as I got here, the first comment, this guy came up to me and said, sir, the junkyard's down the road. He kind of hurt my feelings, yeah. Hurt my feelings. Uh, he told me, he goes, why is that truck here? You need to put it out back somewhere. Yeah. I've known him for a long time. He was just Must have been the same guy, yeah. but. Yeah, so check out this setup. Uh, kind of first time we had the wedge trailer out for a little bit and the welder rig pulled it really good hand is even what's that i had to look at it well, yeah. look how close it is yeah oh yeah it would have tore it up oh yeah turtle david would have divorced us and brian and heather came all the way from sneedville tennessee yes. to hang out with us well they did bring a plus one yeah, oh, they got jay <laughs> sorry jay <laughs> Hannah Square Body, Last old time Square Body. I'll probably be in Indiana for a show. Yeah, so Hannah sold it, the old Turtle David. Yeah, I wonder if he wrote that down. Oh, on his Is registration. His name, Turtle David. Turtle David, say hello. Hello. The new Square Body owner. <laughs> Did you put down as your registration, Turtle David? No. No? <laughs> it seemed legit. Look at that. She even got Tennessee plates on her already. Wow. Come yeah. prepared. Oh, yeah. The last time. Well, it won't be the last time we see it, I guess. No, but it'll probably be the last time in Indiana. Last time in Indiana. What did Maybe. you do? Maybe. 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 Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you think, Jace? Look, he's found Oh, found you a hole. See you, man. Pizza Planet showed up. Jeff's new ride. <laughs> put, a, put him a little 4BT. 